Hello there, welcome to Watson's Daily TV. I'm Peter Watson and I'm here with my take on two major topics in today's business news distilled for you in three minutes. Can I beat this buzzer? Today I'm going to talk about objections to Libra and the dangers of new craze FaceApp. Although the G7 group of countries has failed to agree on how to tax tech giants, they have united against Facebook's Libra, citing problems with anti-money laundering and countering the financing of terrorism, as well as consumer and data protection, cyber resilience, fair competition and tax compliance, according to an ECB report. The US and France have been particularly vocal in their criticism of Facebook's new stablecoin and everyone seemed to agree that more financial innovation and cheaper international payments processing was needed. A G7 working group made four recommendations. Firstly, that stablecoins should meet the highest regulatory standards, which would improve, uh, involve proper supervision. Secondly, that they should be standardised legal cover and guarantees to protect all stakeholders. Thirdly, there should be operational and cyber resilience. And fourthly, the management of assets must be safe and completely transparent. The Facebook Libra bun fight is only just beginning. The second thing I wanted to mention today was the dangers of the face app face aging craze. The age challenge that has gone viral on social media where you let the app have access to photos which it then ages artificially has pushed it up the app charts. However, what people don't necessarily realise is that FaceApp is made by a Russian company called Wireless Lab and when you sign up, buried in the T's and C's, is the rather worrying bit that says you are giving it perpetual, irrevocable, non-exclusive, royalty-free, worldwide, fully paid, transferable, sub-licensable licence to use and reproduce your image. Clearly this looks like it could be a blatant breach of Europe's GDPR laws, so watch out, you never know who could be using your photos. Other than that, in my Watson's Daily online blog that you can find on watsonsdaily.com, I talk about South Korean problems with 5G, Netflix losing subscribers, eBay's positive outlook and good times for watches of Switzerland, among other things. Anyway, Watson's Daily is intended to give you the essence of the day's commercial news with opinion. You can read the whole thing in anything between one and seven minutes and it's free. Please go to what Watson's Daily.com to find out more if you're interested. See you tomorrow and thanks for watching. Watson, out.